Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sheely Showcase. I am your host with the most is the shaman of Sheely, Miss Katie Kinsey Bebe. And as you can see, I do not have my lovely co host today. Savannah's got some personal family stuff going on, so she's got the week off. Well wishes to Savannah, of course. We love you, darling. But it's Solo to Katie, part two. Um, so far, the names have been uh, the remix. Uh, Soul of Kitty 2, The Electric Boogaloo. There's been a lot of names. I'm not sure what the actual title of this will be. You will find out once the episode comes out, of course. But before we get into some news and rumors, thank you everyone in the chat. Uh, Vince, Will, Allison, Brig Kyle, Matt, Jeebus, the friends. Thank you. I appreciate you all. If you'd like to be a part of the live chat, twitch.tv slash Sheely Showcase, typically Thursday, 6 p.m., Eastern-ish, give or take, or youtube.com slash Sheila Showcase for the video version after the fact, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, after the fact. And don't worry, if you missed any of that, <clears throat> I will repeat it at the very end. Don't you fret, I promise. Now, uh, news and rumors? Shall we? Let's do it. On SmackDown this past week... Tegan Knox came back. Now, let's address the elephant in the room here. Not everyone likes Tegan Knox. Um, and I completely understand that. But if you know me, you know that when Tegan Knox got released early last year, uh, or sometime last year, I can't even remember when, I was very upset because I love Tegan Knox. No knees, Tegan. That's disrespectful. <laughs> Um, I love Tegan. I have loved her since the Mae Young Classic. <laughs> she didn't even have knees in her jeans. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, but, so I've liked her since then. Her journey with dealing with multiple knee injuries back to back, uh, it sucks. But I'm happy she's back. Adds more to the women's division. Again, some people don't like her because she doesn't have a character, this, that. I understand. She's not for everybody. But I love her. And I'm happy she's back. And it can kind of continue the feud and the beef she had with Dakota back in NXT. Because if you all remember, Dakota turned on Tegan and Team Rhea at the first Women's War Games in 2019. Fantastic show. But now Tegan came back. Saved Liv. It's a whole thing. It's a grand old time. So that happened. And people have been speculating, oh, where'd Bobby Roode go? Well, I have an answer. He had spinal fusion surgery uh, through the front of his neck. I can't remember which part of his neck got messed up. But he posted about it. He is okay. He is recovering right now. But it'll probably be a little bit before we see Bobby Roode back in the ring. Wish him well. Lots of love and support to Bobby Roode. Maybe when he comes back, he will be glorious once again. Who knows? I don't know. Do you guys know? It's like, I feel like I'm Steve from Blue's Clues. Or like Dora, or something. Where you just talk to the audience, and then you pause. You wait for a response that doesn't happen in real time. It, <laughs> you know, it's fine. Don't mind me. <clears throat> uh, then, in news that um, kind of shocked people, also shocked me, it's giving Dora. Thank you. Um, Willie Regal is done with AEW. Now, what that means is, uh, according to Tony Cohen, um, I also got this information from the Angle Radio, Joey. If you guys know him, he's a great guy. He's a great follow. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so after the holidays is when William Regal's contract will be done. And he's not going to be allowed to appear on WWE TV. Which kind of sucks. But, um, yeah, like that does actually kind of suck thinking about it shortest AEW run. I mean, he can't be on TV for a year. 
I understand why he's going back, though. I mean, his son, Charlie Dempsey, is currently in NXT. And I would understand. Like, he told Tony Khan, listen, I'm going to be real with you, Sunshine. I want to go back and train with my son, coach my son. Do all these things with his son, as he should. The clauses are so dumb. I agree. Shortest AEW run was probably Leo Rush. Honestly, I completely forgot Leo Rush was even in AEW for a hot second. Uh, so, yeah, that... And if you didn't know, um... Uh, that a Jesus that William Regal was leaving AW. He had a video promo thing that was recorded a few weeks ago, like two weeks ago, I think Tony Shimani said, and it basically like put the nail in the coffin that Regal was leaving. Basically, um, he loves coaching too. Maybe he didn't feel as fulfilled by that in AW. That's also very true. Like. He, I loved Blackpool Combat Club, the BCC, if you will, um, but it just, it just hits different. Like, I loved him with them, because, like, it made sense, because he was a great leader of the Blackpool Combat Club, but now he kind of, like, bestowed that honor to Mox. Wh what do... What do we can the B... Uh, what do we call the BCC? Um, I don't know what you call the BCC now, because there is no Blackpool. Um, anyone have suggestions as to what we can call the BCC now? Because I have zero idea. I, again, the door thing. I was waiting for a response. I'm used to having a co-host. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, I love, I love the, the ideas, the guesses here, people. Uh, I would always say watch the video version of these because the chat does appear on screen if you would like to know what I'm laughing at because I'm not going to repeat them. Uh, they're still going to be the BCC. Mox said in an interview with Renee a while back that the BCC is going to be like Regal's legacy and it'll keep going on like that if it were the Heart Dungeon. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that. It's not bad. Um, let's see here. In it's somewhat sadder news... Um, Barry Windham, WWE Hall of Famer, was in the ICU earlier this week. Uh, I have not heard any updates about him. Uh, like I said, I, all I know is that he was in the ICU as of earlier this week. Thoughts and prayers to him and his family. I can't even imagine. Scary, <laughs> we live in some scary times, you know? It's not fun. It's not a fun time. Then... NXT. Vengeance Day. February 4th. It will not be in the... Whatever they're calling it now. The, the, the knockoff full sale. Oh, no, no, no. It's gonna be in Charlotte, North Carolina. That means NXT is moving again for takeovers, which is good. That's what they need to do. You can't just keep everything in that building. You need to spread it out. Spread it out. <laughs> it's the Italian in me. Can you tell? It's, you, <sighs> takeovers are this spectacle that need to be on display for a bigger audience to see. I, I mean, think about all the past... Um, NXT takeovers we've had. Chicago. Philadelphia. To Texas. Uh, New Orleans. Those are the ones I can name off the top of my head. There's been a lot of takeovers. But the majority of them 
have been out of the full sale uh what are they calling this other place like the pc type place but they've been less than stellar lately maybe half or three-fourths of the card is good that doesn't matter you're still getting the opportunity to perform in front of more people yeah i mean not every match is cwc thank you uh not every match is gonna hit but it might for more people I'm wondering how ticket sales are going to be for that. Santa Deliver was only halfway full during Mania Weekend. That's also because they don't tour anymore. NXT used to go around like Raw and SmackDown do. Like, they're not... <clears throat> excuse me, they're not doing anything. NXT just stays there. They're not going out i mean they're doing a live show here and there but like they're not doing anything anymore i know someone who used to be with nxt who was a part of it like he was going to the shows and that was his main job before nxt stopped touring and now he's with the main roster but it's just um named after this uh, I want to see them do TV in smaller venues across the country. That could be interesting. Um, that would be very interesting, actually. If they start to tour, they'll regroup the crowd. Exactly! Like, you can't have a stellar performance if you're not going anywhere and embracing the crowd. Take over Brooklyn, Portland, Chicago, Brooklyn 2, tons of NXT outside the CWC. Yeah, but that was then. I'm saying now there hasn't been. Like, there, there's not a lot that... I don't know. Regardless, they just need to get out of the CWC for a while. Do some other stuff there. The pandemic fucked them up. The pandemic fucked everybody up for a while. Just NXT just took the brunt of it and got screwed. Um, well, I'm just going to move on. <laughs> then, uh, according to the media call Tony Khan had with, you know, the media, about Final Battle, which is on December 10th, which is on Saturday, in case you all didn't know, uh, apparently... <laughs> <laughs> According to Tony Khan, the presence of Ring of Honor is going to be um, reduced after Final Battle on AEW programming. Now, what they could have done is they could have just taken Rampage and made um, made that like a Ring of Honor show, or even Darker Elevation and make that a Ring of Honor show to. So you need to utilize the talent that you have in Ring of Honor, because you have to think, Joe, Jericho, Garcia, FTR, they're prominent on AWTV as Ring of Honor champions. I mean, Joe's also the TNT champion, so like, that one makes sense. He's the catalyst here. He's allowed to do whatever he wants. Um... They need, like, a version of the brand split. I agree. They really do. Because you already had an overinflated roster <clears throat> with AEW, and now adding Ring of Honor talent on top of it, like, you're running out of time and opportunities to use the people. My speculation, according to Will, Briscoe's Joe, Athena, Jericho, Garcia all walk out as the face of Ring of Honor. Okay. Uh, I'm surprised that he didn't bitch that NAC Deadline is the same day as Ring of Honor. Um, I mean, there's nothing he can do about it. There are different times, so he can honestly relax. Uh, Will said, then TK announces the TV deal, streaming deal, in the next month. Honestly, if that's what they need to do, then do it. Like, because you have to do something. You can't put the belt on Jericho, of all people, and be like, oh, this is best for business. And there's still nothing of 
this TV deal that he's been wanting, that he needed to take the boat off Claudia, which that's just, I'm just still annoyed by all of that. I just don't like Jericho, in all honesty here. They're suffering from the same over-invalidated roster that WWE has has for. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very much the same. You, you just gather talent as you see fit and don't utilize them. Yes, that. And then my last bit of news and rumors, because there's not a lot. This just, I kept seeing today, rumors of Sasha Banks appearing in some way, shape, or form at Wrestle Kingdom, I believe in January. It's... I'm, I'm intrigued. Uh, Ava Mump would love to see Sasha at Wrestle Kingdom. I mean, that's the report going right now, is that she's gonna show up somehow. She did tease the idea of facing Kyrie. um, like, a few weeks ago. She, like, put something on her Instagram story. <clears throat> so, it's very possible. She, I don't know if she like, necessarily wrestle, but she might show up, and that could lead to a match further down the line. But with Sasha supposedly, possibly, showing up at Wrestle Kingdom, does that mean the possibility of her coming back to WWE has grown lesser than or stronger? Because, I mean, you have, you currently have Carl Anderson, who's the never open weight champion of New Japan, wrestling on Monday Night Raw almost weekly now. So you still have this connection to New Japan. So with Sasha possibly showing up at Wrestle Kingdom, does that further the chances of us seeing her in WWE sooner rather than later? Or does that mean not she's probably not going to be coming back to WWE? Uh, coming back to wrestling, but that doesn't mean it has to be WWE. I'm just... I don't know. It's basically whatever Sasha wants to do. I'm sorry, Mercedes. Whatever Mercedes wants to do, she's allowed to do it. Like, she doesn't have to come back to WWE. I was just saying, does... Because I know there's been, like, kind of talks here and there between uh, Sasha, Mercedes, and WWE recently. I don't know to what extent those talks were, but there have been a few talks. So, does that kind of lean in their favor or against them with her showing up again possibly at Wrestle Kingdom 17 she can get that Disney money and wrestle for New Japan stardom AAA or work for WWE I mean she Disney got that money like Disney money is good money like I would know I have nothing to do with Disney but Disney money got that good money. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, so that's all the news and rumors I had. <clears throat> now we're just going to move on to today in women's wrestling history. It was a TNA Impact taping from 2009. 2009. It was Awesome Kong, who everyone should know. And Hamada, who has mainly wrestled in AAA, defeating Madison Rain, who was literally on AW Dynamite this past week, uh, and Velvet Sky, who was a very well-known staple in Impact Wrestling, and also the team of Sunita, who mainly wrestled in CMLL, and Taylor Wilde. Now, <laughs> Taylor Wilde... I've heard the name <coughs> a few times just because uh, she was retired and then came back. But then I could have sworn I saw something a few weeks ago about her announcing her like retirement officially. But when I looked it up, I didn't find anything. So I either hallucinated that or it's a different person. And I just assumed Taylor Wilde. Anybody have an answer for me as, as if to I'm crazy or Taylor Wilde actually did that. 
retire doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it means nothing. But I thought I saw it was, but I just don't know if it was her or it was another girl, lady, professional wrestler. I just don't remember. I was going to write it down when it happened, again, a few weeks ago, but I didn't. So that's on me. And if I did, I completely forget. So I'll just keep moving along. If anybody knows whether it's her or somebody else, please let me know. Thank you. So we're just going to do my wrestlers of the week since I am solo Katie. I'm going to start with my tag team, of course, as tradition of the show. I'm going to give it to the acclaimed. I loved the match with FTR. They really stepped up to the plate. FTR was playing a little dirty, which I kind of liked too. It was a good match for both teams, especially because people have been clamoring. They've been chopping at the bit for this match. I think it did well with the time it had. I love the acclaimed. They're very organically over with the crowd. You can't beat that. <laughs> it's great. I love the acclaimed. I know they're not for everybody. Excuse me. They're not everyone's cup of tea. I understand that. But they're my cup of tea, and I like them. So, my tag team of the week is the acclaimed. For my famales of the week, I'm going to give it to Bailey. Now, I really thought... <laughs> Rhea was going to win the triple threat, and that's fine. That's on me for hoping and wishing and praying. That's a thousand percent on me. But Bailey did pick up the win in that first triple threat match, which, by the way, both triple threat... No, I'm sorry. So the both triple threat matches on Raw and the triple threat on NXT, all the women, triple threats. Let's fucking go. Well done, ladies. I love it. I love the theme. But Bailey did pull out the win. So now we get her and Alexa next week. And then that match will determine who faces Bianca. I'm assuming at Rumble. Which, if that's the case, then it makes sense for it not to be Rhea. Because I am still on the train that Rhea is the one that takes the belt off Bianca at Mania. Rhea didn't win. It wasn't involved in the pin because she's being saved from Mania. See? Vince understands. Because, like, I completely forgot that... Mania is still, like, months away. I forget it's December a lot of the time. Uh, Bailey, Alexa, so we get Bailey, Bianca, at Rumble, Rhea wins Rumble. Becky's gonna cost Bailey the match next week. I mean, more than likely. We really, real, words, we realistically could get Alexa and Bianca at Rumble, and Bailey and Becky kind of just duking it out inside the Rumble. Which would be interesting to see. I like all scenarios with this right now. Because there's a lot of side feuds in, like, the main feud of the title and then branches off of that. Save Becky versus Bailey for Mania. Personally, want Bailey versus Becky at the Rumble. I mean, you could have Bailey and Becky at Mania. You could. You realistically could. I was just saying, like, you could have them, like, beefing it out in the Rumble. So, say Becky comes in, like, number five, and Bailey comes in, like, number ten. And then they kind of just, like, fight with each other until one of them gets eliminated. That's a possibility. I don't know. But Bailey did win. And I love Bailey. Bailey's great. Heel Bailey has been fun. Part of me does kind of miss Hugger Bailey. She was great. But that's okay. Everyone needs a gimmick change here and there. And Bailey has been very well off as a heel. So kudos to her. Damn Shirley, on the other hand, mm, we gotta kind of work on it. I mean, kind of, I mean, like, we really need to work on it because they've been losing a lot and there's a lot, not a lot of momentum going their way anymore. Um, and then my, my man's is, my men. Um, oh, pause, hold. Um, what about someone like Deanna Perrazzo re-debuting at the Royal Rumble? That is also a possibility because she did tweet at Chelsea Green, um, 
if she could, quote, come home with her. We very well could see Diana back in WWE. I don't know. I kind of, uh, I kind of want to save Rumble stuff. Like, questions like that. I know that's probably going to be, like, the question of the week. Like, probably two weeks or a week before Rumble. Just because that's, that's when we get close to time. And hopefully nothing is, all the participants aren't spoiled again. Because that kind of irritates me. But, that's neither here nor there. My man's is. I have two. Solo Sokoa. Solo Skating. It all works, right? It's all the same thing. Solo destroyed Matt Riddle. Decimated him. Decimated, yeah. I used it. It's a big word. I understand. Ruined Riddle's life. Paid homage to his uncle Umaga. Yeah, my man is slowly turning into a manga, and I love it. I agree, Anki Bump. I agree. He just... He even did the Umaga face paint, even though it was, like, kind of a... Uh, when he had the match with Boa, y'all remember, it was a thing. Um, <laughs> that match was a thing. But he really has transitioned into it. Wrestling barefoot. Um... You just use the Samoan spike, which, eh, incredible. I love what they're doing with Solo right now. It's fantastic. Yeah, because he was burned. Yeah, I know. His face was burned. I remember. I remember it. I'm just saying. <laughs> but Solo's Koa is doing right right now. He is killing it, 110%. I am very happy for him. I do kind of think he'll be the one to snitch somehow, and maybe that's how we get Dwayne. But I do like the narrative of Solo being the one to be like, nah, I'm done. I'm over this, and leaving. And or being the one the elders sent, it's all in quotes, to be the one to take the title off Roman and dethrone him. We don't know what they're doing. Listen, the bloodline has so many intertwining stories in it, we don't know what's going to come next. Or which member of the bloodline will come next. He's just there because the elders told him to be. But what did, did they just tell him to be an enforcer, or did they tell him another reason to be there? See, it's all coming together, guys. You just gotta think about it. You know what I'm saying? Just think about it. <laughs> and then, I'm also giving it to Ricky Starks. Man's won the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal thing. But that that happened. That's the thing. But, didn't even get a second to breathe before Maxwell Jacob Friedman, everyone's favorite rat bastard, came out. And, you know, Max did his thing. All that jazz. Spoke called Ricky Starks the pebble, called him a knockout version of the rock, which, funny, but disrespectful, but also maybe kind of true. I don't know. But then Ricky just fires back, doesn't give Max room to breathe. This man just starts going off, calls him a maxi pad, tells him he smells like paint thinner and ass. I was laughing my ass off and just in awe. This is what people wanted. As soon as we found out Ricky was going to face MJF, this is what people wanted. We wanted the promo off. It's rare when you get two people who are good in the ring and good on the mic. And they go against each other. A lot of the times, you just want to hear him talk. Back and forth. Face to face. He called him Maxi Pat. I know, it was hysterical. So, that's what I'm, that's what Ricky called him, Vince. I'm just quoting Ricky Starks. You would know if you watched the promo, which you need to. Um, but it was like five minutes of the two of them talking. Well done. You got my attention. This is what I wanted when I found out it was going to be Ricky and MJF. 
and I got it. I hate that the match is literally already next week, but I have a feeling it'll probably go a little longer than that, because next week it's for the ring and the belt, which means Ricky probably isn't going to win, which sucks, but maybe Ricky will get another shot down the line. I don't even know what the hell their next pay-per-view is. Revolution, I think, in San Francisco? I don't know. Um, I don't want to like Ricky. Why? Ricky Starks is great. Um, I always watch Night of My Friday morning. I think this is the first chapter in a much longer story between these two. I agree. This is definitely just page one of what could be a full-length novel between the two of them. And I love that. I love that narrative. I love that idea. Because they they really are, like, two... Uh, what am I, what am I, like, organic stars in AW. Like, they didn't come from WWE. Like, Hangman, Jungle Boy. Like, th those types of people. I don't quite care about either guys that's that's on you Vince that's on you um yeah but big fucking shout out to Ricky Starks I'm very excited to see where this goes and I know Matt doesn't like people using the spear which I understand a lot of people do use spears but Ricky freaking speared Max out of his shoes that's allowed that's fine with me. But his finish is so cool. The Rochambeau is a fantastic move. I really wish he would use it more. Yeah, he does have a damn good spear. You're right. He does. I really just wish he would use Rochambeau. Like, I don't remember how long ago it was when he had the match with Jay Lethal, but he literally reversed the lethal injection into a Rochambeau, and it was beautiful. <laughs> I just wish he would do it more. That's just me. But alright, question of the week then. Now, I mentioned Final Battle is on Saturday. The other pay-per-view, PLE, whatever you like to call it, that is on December 10th as well, so this Saturday, is Deadline. The NXT pay-per-view, PLE, TakeOver, whatever it's called. They have many names down in NXT. So, I'm going to run through the card, and I'm kind of just going to give my predictions on what I think might happen, or what I would like to happen, because, let's be honest, I really couldn't think of a question this week. And that's on me. I get it. That's not on me. So, we're just going to start with Alba Fire versus uh, Isla Dawn. A, I'm very excited for this match. I, Isla's witchy vibe, her aesthetic... It's me. I love it. She's great. Uh, and I love Alba Fire. Like, Kaylee Ray is fantastic on the ring. So I'm very excited for this match. It would make sense for Isla Dawn to win. It would. But then what do you do with Alba after the fact? Do you move Alba up? Or do you kind of just, like, let this just be, like, one match of a few between the two of them? I don't know. But I'm going Island on. Uh, then we have Pretty Deadly defending those NXT. Oh, what's up, Heel Tactics? Uh, defending those NXT tag team titles against The New Day. Uh, the New Day showed up on NXT. <laughs> it was surprising, it was shocking. NXT is where Xavier Woods got started, and man, swear to God, hasn't aged a goddamn day. He looks the exact same, except his hair is a little more poofy and well-maintained. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Vince. Did you watch NXT? They showed up on... They showed up and challenged pretty deadly for the titles on Saturday. And according to Shawn Michaels, HBK, they're down, and uh, New Day are down to chill in NXT for a while. You're the worst, Vince. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I, 
I kind of want New Day to win. I agree with you, Tech. It's like, I kind of want them to win. Imagine what they can do for those titles. Imagine just them down in NXT chilling. They become Triple Crown champions. As they should be. That'd be so fun. I want them to win so bad now. I was so shocked. Because I was barely paying attention to a Pretty Deadly segment. And I heard the New Day's music. I was like, there's no way. And I looked. And I saw Kofi and Xavier. Vibing. It was fantastic. I was so happy. So, I'm down with letting New Day win. Give Pretty Deadly a break. They can have another match at Vengeance Day if they want to. Yeah, you and the Bulls, I know. And then, let's move on to the Iron Survivor Challenge matches. First up with the women, we have Zoe Stark, Roxanne Perez, Cora Jade, Kiana James, and Indy Hartwell, who won her match on NXT, as the five women. Now, Indy confronted Mandy after the fact, said she's going to be able to take the title off of her. I I don't know who you have win this. What's up, Jess? I don't know who you have win this. Because in my mind, whoever wins this has to win the belt off of the respectful champions. I'm assuming at Vengeance Day. Because you could have it be Roxanne Perez and have her the one, be the one to dethrone Mandy and Toxic maybe goes to the main roster. But do you move Indy up if she loses? Like, what if Indy wins the Iron Survivor match but then loses um i don't think both winners will go on to win the titles i think Mello wins and dethrones braun whoever wins the women might lose against mandy um <coughs> excuse me that's a fair point kyle that's because that's hold on excuse me that's what i was thinking because carmelo hayes has to fucking win <laughs> point blank period like we'll just jump up to the men's real quick uh, Carmelo Hayes, J.D. McDumbass, big-ass head, um, I believe we called him J.D. McDome piece on Young Kings, so I might take that one, um, Grayson Waller, uh, Joe Gacy, and Axiom. It's Carmelo Hayes. <clears throat> That's who you ha- I have been saying for months that Carmelo's gotta be done with the N.A. title. He needs to just move up to the big belt and take it off of Braun. Imagine Carmelo hits the NXT title. Money. Money. But I guess we'll see. Carmelo should be the one to win, though. Point for the period. Back to the women's. I kind of think it might be Indy who wins. I think she'll definitely put up hell of a fight. But maybe she doesn't win. It would be interesting if both Iron Survivor Challenge winners did win the belt after the fact. <clears throat> but that could be a twist that we don't see coming. It's like, oh, well, this person won the challenge, so they must win the belt, right? Right? Ah, uh ah, -uh, wink, wink. And they don't, which, that's fine. It just would be interesting if they did. And at this point, there's not a lot of women who can or should beat Mandy. Uh, just as Roxy takes it. Okay. <laughs> I'll stop there. So, honestly, as of right now, I'm gonna go with Indy winning. Because I don't, off the top of my head, I can't think of a time when her and Mandy faced for the title in the 400 some days Mandy's been champion. 
If so, if they have, someone please tell me. Someone please tell me if they have. But to my knowledge, I don't think they have. And then finally, Braun Breaker, Apollo Crews, NXT title. I am over the the balding that the two of them are doing. Showing up at the diner, eating some brunch, fishing. I, no, enough of this. You guys could have just been beating the absolute shit out of each other for weeks. Yeah, respect, I understand, but I really wanted, like, more animosity between the two of them. Nothing wrong with good-natured fisticuffs. When I'm not fishing shaming anybody. I'm just saying their their very words. Their move sets are very similar. They're both very strong, very quick. That's literally having brawn against brawn at this point, which we haven't really seen and kind of needs to be seen. Would I think it'd be awesome if Apollo wins the title? Hell yeah, of course. Do I think Apollo will win the title? No. Because, like we mentioned before, we, you know, me and the class over here, <laughs> Mello wins, Mello takes the be belt, title, championship, whatever you'd like to call it, off of Braun. That's what needs to happen. That's what I think should happen. <sighs> if you don't fish, you never get your catch. I can't stand you. Justin. <laughs> uh, Vince said, I want Apollo to win and Braun to disappear. Mm, I hate to break it. I hate to Braun break her to you, buddy. Um, Braun's not going anywhere. If he's going anywhere, it'll be to the main roster after Mello beats him at Vengeance Day. Also, I'm very proud of the little pun I had. <laughs> I'm very proud of that. Thank you. Thank you. So those are my deadline predictions. You all can tell me yours like you have in the chat or after the fact in the YouTube comments uh, in, the, in the Twitters once I do it but you know you guys don't have to it's just a suggestion <coughs> and I believe that is all I have for the She Leech Showcase today I'll do a little post show because I still got some time to kill and everything before I'm on botch spots and chair shots later tonight so, thank you guys again for watching and listening. I really do appreciate it. Again, you can follow me on Twitter. It's over here this time. At KatieRasson13. Link to your to get all things She Lead Showcase. Twitch.tv slash She Lead Showcase. Typically Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern. We got Seasonal Showcase coming up in two weeks. And then the She Lead Showcase Awards um, on December 29th. That'll be the last... Yeah, 29th. The last <laughs> she lead of the year if you would like to vote on the award we have i will um post the link to the google doc under the tweet that i have for the show so again you got to be following me on twitter to find it and of course youtube.com slash she lead showcase i always watch the videos because they're way more entertaining and you can always see the chat down here that pops up so that way, if I'm not reading everything, you can still see it on screen. If you want to listen, which that's your prerogative, I understand. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Apple Podcasts. I'm trying to get us on more things. It's a process. I'll get there. Maybe next year. Uh, but She Leads to Showcase, as you all know, is the brand. It is the, the brand of <clears throat> the show. We have the weekly recap, which is Sheely Showcase. I know, crazy. Then there's Inside the Mind of is the interview series I do with people, podcasters, and the wrestling community. Uh, the latest one is with RN from SmackDraw. There isn't going to be another one this year, just because holidays are coming up. But expect one in January. Who it is, I don't know. <laughs> It'll be a fun surprise for everybody once we find out. I know that there, I mean, I'll just say it now, there will be a uh, Inside the Mind of Katie Kinsey Part 2 in um, February. 
I don't know when in February. I'm, I will be doing a part two. I have dis discussed amongst my peers. I will be doing a part two for that. It's going to be a little different. I'm trying to work out the kinks. <laughs> Bad word choice. I'm trying to figure everything out. So be on the lookout for that in February. Then in the crowd, returned with Justin from Getcho and his cousin Rob. That's on the channel. All the other past episodes are there. I plan to do more with that next year. Again, I'll be talking all about this on the 29th as well. But then there's the New Japan Takeover, which is on a hiatus until, I believe, Savannah said Wrestle Kingdom. She's two episodes of, like, The Fuse out right now. Storytime with Katie Kinsey Bay Bay. That's... I'll film one soon. Maybe I'll do... I'll do one before Christmas. I won't give you a specific day because I just don't know. But I am going to SmackDown tomorrow. Today as this gets uploaded. So... I will be doing another little vlog. Um, it's going to be different because I'm not traveling <laughs> this time. I'm not leaving the state. I'm literally going downtown to watch it. But it'll kind of be like a little day in the life of Katie Kinsey and a little vlog of SmackDown. So I'm very excited to do that. That'll be up sometime this weekend. Um, I think that's everything that I do on this channel. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. I know. Oh, I'm also on Floor Slapper Sports. If you want to find my writings, uh, I have one article on there, and then everything else is on my sub stack. I will put those links in the um, link tree. That's the word I'm looking for. I'll put those there so you guys can, if you want to read what I write. I have a creative for any minor. I hate utilizing it. Please, somebody read it for the love of God. <laughs> but I think that's it thank you all again so 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 much for hanging out with Solos Katie greatly appreciate it until next time bye bye